Frank August, got a bitchin' bottle. Is the booze inside worth it? I don't know. Here we go. Well, I do know, because it's partially drank. So, can't lie to you. Here we go. Hey, it's Matt from Bourbon Banters 2020. Today's review is going to be on Frank August. Look at this bottle. This is cool. This topper is like four pounds. So, thank God I didn't have to pay uh, by weight because it would have been a fortune. And it was kind of expensive on the on, on the other side. So, I am going to do a review on this because I saw this at Total Wine. Here we go. Saw this at Total Wine. It looked interesting and you try and kind of, you know, cause you, you go in there and you go, you see all these bottles all from all over the place. They have these little tags saying, hey, you know, Angelica likes uh, this bottle and she has no clue. She, I, I know she has no clue, you know, of what bourbon whiskey's meant to taste like. But, cause they have a little picture there. And I'm like, really? Come on lady. So with this, I saw it kind of sitting there and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to wait. I'm going to pass. Check out a couple of reviews. People were happy with it. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go back. When I get a chance, I'm going to get it. So this is what I did. Go back. I get it. You, you, if I am bored, I'm going to go out and do something. And it could cost money. <laughs> it could just be I'm busy doing stuff. So I got to be outside. So with this, this is called Frank August Bourbon Whiskey. Distilled. Uh, undisclosed. Uh, and that's a big hit, big hit on my part. You know, I, I, it, they kind of chaffed me a bit. Proof, 100. Age statement, no age statement. But it says that they're at least four years. Mash bill, undisclosed. Right there, I should be fucking hating this stuff. Because, give me some info. It's not hard to tell me what's inside the fucking bottle. Not hard, because you know. Or it's either you don't want people to know, or you're just too lazy to put it down on the back because this says virtually nothing. Distilled and aged in Kentucky, bottled by Frank August. Barnstown, Kentucky. That's it. They ain't telling you much more. That's it. They don't tell you shit. So right now I'm already got, you know, I'm a little chapped and I'm expecting fucking home runs from this thing because they don't put anything on there. MSRP was, I think they say 70 bucks. Total wine, I think they got it for 72 bucks. So, here we go. And if you notice, if it's kind of loud in the background, I don't know, I'll probably have some music going along with this, but it's dumping because old tropical storm, Hillary, is pounding me. And I'm in Southern California, you know, Los Angeles County area. So, it's coming down. So, here we go, on the nose. A little apple, the citrus, caramel, vanilla. So that kind of all blended in. It's kind of fruity with a little vanilla. Kind of like a fruit cup when you're a kid. I don't know, some of you kids are, some of you guys are probably younger than me by half my age and you guys probably don't have fruit cups anymore. They gotta have fruit cups. Because you always get that one little half cherry in there. You're like, dude, I scored. And then, you know, they give you out of a 12 pack, you get one little cherry in one little uh, container and the rest are no cherries. But yeah, that's how it works. All right, going for, going for it. Here we go, we're going. All right, on that first one, heavy on the caramel and vanilla, so it just kind of just coats. You know, the uh, flavor volume on this ain't cranked up to 11. I'm gonna say it's about an eight. It's good, it's great, it's a 100 proofer, good enough to sip on. And then with that, I get a little pear and little apple kind of blended right there. So I think I think uh, you kind of get that, and, the, and it doesn't, it, it's not like a crazy coat, but it's a, Good enough coat, kind of fades. And I'm looking for more right now. I'm looking for more. Here we go, going for more. Still get that caramel, vanilla, pear, a little bit of that apple, maybe a little bit of that uh, faint, faint chocolate or, you know, like a slight mocha, but I think maybe this thing might be good with a cigar, bring out some more flavors. I got the warden inside. So she jams me and goes, when are you gonna do it? I'm like, dude, you want me to start drinking at fucking three, eight, three in the afternoon? 
I, you know, people say you can't drink before noon. You can drink anytime you want. But me personally, I'd like to start hitting it about it, early four o'clock, late five o'clock. You know, eating dinner or whatever, and then you know, get my routine. I'm a fucking old guy, so that third one, still the caramel vanilla, slight pear, getting a little coffee, getting that oak, tasting a little tobacco on there, with a hair bit of cinnamon, 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 cinnamon. In. Cinnamon. Oh, good lord. I, well, for a pro. Alright, I'm gonna go finish this thing up. I got a little bit left. Last sip, I'm doing it for the finish. And if I hadn't told you yet, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share it, pass it on. I gotta work the hard way. Uh, if you notice, I haven't thrown a whole lot of politics in because YouTube's been censoring me, so I kind of have to behave for a little bit. You know, it's like the uh, kid that's got to sit in the front of the classroom. He's got to behave more than the kid in the back. So I'm in the front. I'm being watched. So hopefully the uh, subscribers, because they're not putting me on the main feed. So I do what I can. I'm doing this because I like it. I do it for the uh, people that are uh, their normal listeners and viewers. That's what I do it for, you know, and I have a good time, you know, because if I didn't do this, fuck, I'd be drinking way more than I need to, and this will actually keep me busy, occupied, editing, doing stuff like that, so that's why I do it. So, on that finish, I do get a little spice, maybe a hair bit of raisin and cinnamon, I get some oak, but the finish isn't just hanging out, it just kind of comes and goes. So the flavor volumes, like I said, is about an eight. The finish, I would give it maybe uh, not so good on the volume wise, probably about a five. It's still there, get a little bit of flavor in there, but it kind of comes and goes pretty quick. It's not a uh, benchmark, it's, it's well above that. But I think uh, my theory is the uh, Frank August Bourbon Whiskey or the uh, people that Frank, you know, the company that blends this or whatever they do figure they had a pretty good product but if they put it in a kick-ass bottle which this is because this is a great uh, decanter is bitching you know heavy top great looking bottle simple you can actually peel the label off on the back so it's great you can use it for whatever wine what have you I think they needed to push that kick-ass looking look it's like a Great looking actor that can't act. Or that can act okay. You're like, well, you know, you could have picked a better actor for that movie. This thing, it's good, it's great. Is it worth 72 bucks? Whew, no, I don't think it is. But at the same time, I think you're paying, if you look at it from the perspective of, yeah, this is a pretty good, this is an okay $40 bottle and you're paying 30 bucks for a cool, cool fucking, uh, 30, uh, uh, $40 booze with a $30 bottle. I think, yeah, okay, they kind of made up for it. So I think that's how they marketed it. They, like, we got okay stuff here, and that's, I'm, I'm, I'm speculating. We got okay stuff here. If we put it in a bitchin' bottle, then we can try and sell the bottle and the booze at the same time. So it's good. Would I ever buy it again? No, I would not. I'm gonna finish this. It was good, I'll enjoy it. If you want a bottle, get it. There's a bitch in bottle that I think outshines pretty much everything else and you can use this for anything. Whiskey that's inside, it's just okay. So, like I told you before, this thing here, I will drink it, it's good, but I will not get it again. So this is up there with a, what I, uh, in the past, not, yeah, Rowan's Creek, right? I think Rowan's Creek. He had two bottles. What fucking bottles were they? Uh, I'm gonna look through my notes real quick. All right, Rowan's Creek, because uh, Noah Mill, Mills was a way better bottle. Rowan's Creek, hey, you know what? I'll drink it, finish it. And that's it. I will never buy another bottle again. This thing here, like, uh, unless Frank August comes out with something fucking great, and it's got to be a kick-ass bottle because you've already proved that you can make a bitch and fucking bottle. It better be all that in a bag of chips. Seventy-two bucks, not worth it. 
but I had to try it. Uh, I've had better stuff from bottom shelf bottles. So, hey, if you like it, subscribe, share it, spread the word. I'm at. This was helpful. If you can avoid spending 70 bucks and you can buy two bottles of something that's probably better, do it. If you want a cool decanter, fucking get it and mow through the stuff. So this falls in the good category. I'm mad. I'll touch you later.